All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our next video talk segment. Uh, we're just gonna give a little bit more time here for everyone to get joined and get all set up. Uh, if you're having any issues, um, you know, with your audio video, anything like that, uh, feel free to just give us a chat right now. Now's the time to do it. Um, during, the, uh, during the presentation, feel free to also chat us if you still have it. Uh, Dorothy will be able to help you out. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and use that Q&A feature, uh, and I'll be getting to you at the end of the video talk. Uh, but like I said, we're just going to give a few extra minutes here just for uh, some people who are lagging behind a little, and then we'll get started. Okay, guys. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Van Meter. Uh, I'm our community marketing specialist here uh, at Grandstream Networks. Uh, and you are once again in one of our Grandstream video talks. Uh, so yeah, so today we are going to be going ahead and going over uh, our Wi-Fi series. So from our GWN 7610LR that we have, uh, to all of our other access points, of course, a router, and of course our upcoming Grandstream uh, GWN Cloud. Uh, we'll be covering it. So in today's uh, video talk, I'm just going to be giving that quick introduction. We'll go ahead and go over the devices, what they're capable of, uh, kind of their, some of their technical uh, specs. I'll give a brief overview of some different deployment scenarios uh, of the devices, of course, and then I'll wrap it all up. Um, by sort of going over some of the more unique features uh, to the GW GWN series, <laughs> excuse me, um, that will definitely uh, definitely help you in a deployment and really help you customize any Wi-Fi network uh, based on the deployment or use case that you are putting it in. Uh, so, with no further delays, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So everyone should be able to see my presentation right now. Uh, so just before we get started, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, uh, feel free to go ahead and use that Q&A feature that you'll find at the bottom of the IP Video Talk portal there. Uh, if you are maybe experiencing any type of like technical difficulties, audio or, uh, or video issues, go ahead and use the chat and let us know. Uh, Dorothy will be able to help, uh, help you out. But anyway, so yeah, what we're talking about today is optimizing network deployments uh, with the GWN series. And actually, one second, guys, sorry. I almost forgot. Just one moment here. I almost forgot to go ahead and put this to all of the people watching on our Facebook channel. So let me go ahead and get that real quick before we get started. 
Definitely want to make sure we're getting this to everyone who's interested. we have that going we can kind of continue the presentation sorry about that guys all right so yeah so like i was saying today we're talking about optimizing uh kind of those networking deployments with the gwn series um so just real quick uh we'll go over the overview here uh grant stream founded in 2002 over 600 employees uh, we have that full product portfolio containing uh, you know, everything from our business conferencing uh, to our IP phones, gateways, ATAs, of course, our IP BBXs, uh, and just those full UC networking options. Uh, we're primarily serving small to medium-sized businesses, SMBs, uh, in those consumer markets. Uh, and of course, we, you know, we're really globally located. We have offices in the US, China, Morocco, Venezuela, and Netherlands. Uh, we have that award-winning history. Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely something we're really proud of. Uh, you know, really proud to be able to share it with you guys and really kind of show it off uh, when we get nominated and when we win. Uh, everything from our Frost and Sullivan Award to our TMC awards that we get, uh, our internet, internet telephony ones, of course, uh, to our WebRTC. Always proud to sort of point those out. So really when it comes to Grandstream, it's all about that total solution. From our IP telephony to our conferencing, networking products like we'll be talking about today, uh, and of course those security products. But like I said, today in our video talk, we're gonna to be touching on that networking line. So let's talk about Grandstream's networking solutions. I'll go ahead and go through the uh, each device real quick. Uh, so, you know, really offers that powerful Wi-Fi access point as a, you know, total networking option. Uh, really from hitting that industry leading coverage range to fast provisioning uh, and management thanks to our built-in controllers uh, and of course the outstanding network throughput uh, and our support for just a really large number of AP clients. So first going off, and you guys may recall how long, if you've been with us for a little bit, this was our first wireless AP. We're pretty excited about it when we came out with it, our GWN 7610. Uh, it's our enterprise grade uh, 802.11 AC Wi-Fi access point, really supporting everything uh, up to about, excuse me, 250 Wi-Fi clients, uh, 1.75 gigabit per second wireless throughput uh, with 2x gigabit wire, wireline ports. 175 meter coverage reign, uh, it really gives devices uh, that sort of superior mobility to move throughout a business, all the way from our dual band three uh, by three uh, MIMO technology. Of course, we have the advanced uh, security features as well and simultaneous dual band uh, Wi-Fi signals. Uh, moving through there was our GWN 76000, our mid-tier 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, <laughs> wave two Wi-Fi access point, that is a mouthful. But uh, yeah, this one supports more than 450 Wi-Fi clients. Compared to the uh, GWN 7610 though, uh, has a little bit less of throughput uh, as a 1.27 gigabit per second. Uh, 165 meter coverage range for once again, just that superior device mobility really allows people to stay productive and just sort of unchain them from their desk and let them move around, keep efficient. Uh, dual band 2x2 two two, two MIMO technology, uh, and still that advanced Wi-Fi security features, simultaneous dual band Wi-Fi signals, of course the embedded controllers, definitely a really big thing when it comes to this, but we'll be touching in a little bit more on that a bit later. Uh, the GWN 76000LR recently released. It's our outday, uh, excuse me, outdoor long range access point, supporting more than 450 plus Wi-Fi clients, 1.27 gigabit per second wireless throughput, and over 300 meter coverage range. Uh, this is definitely a go-to solution that we've been seeing when it comes to large warehouses, sporting complexes, parks, uh, in just any type of outdoor uh, outdoor area environment. Uh, just wanted to touch on it, of course, we have the GWN Cloud. 
Uh, this is currently in beta right now. If you guys want to actually give it a try and you have some APs, you want to test it out, uh, you can go ahead and go to gwn.cloud slash register. Uh, it's really a fantastic cloud controller uh, sort of management platform for our GWN series access points. Um, you can really manage networks from anywhere using a web browser or, of course, the GWN Cloud app. Uh, we have that available on iOS and Android. Uh, works for all, excuse me, with all GrantStream access points. It really provides real-time AP uh, and client monitoring. Uh, you have the integrated statistics, reports, alerts. Uh, you can really streamline your network configuration process uh, in an easy-to-use web UI. Uh, I could talk about this for a little bit, but I'm actually going to demo it uh, for you guys at the end of this presentation, just so you can take a look at the uh, take a look at the UI for yourselves. Uh, then, of course, our gigabit VPN router. Um, so it has seven gigabit ports uh, that hardware accelerated VPN. Uh, of course, the embedded controller within the router itself can actually manage up to 300 GWN Wi-Fi APs, uh, with, of course, loaded with the multi-WAN uh, ports, a really intuitive web interface as well to centrally monitor and provision uh, the entire network. So, you know, for a little bit more of your mid-range AP deployments, this can, can definitely help you out here. Uh, then 1 million packet per second routing and 10 gigabit per second aggregate switching power. Uh, so let's go into a quick deployment overview of our series here. Uh, so then you guys took a look at the tech build specs. Let's, uh, let's kind of zoom out a little bit and take a little bit of a bigger look at it. Uh, when it comes to our GWN7610 and GWN76000 series, uh, this is really great from your small business to your enterprise networks. Um, this is really a great place, whether it becomes offices, multiple room deployments like hospitals, for example, uh, and of course, education environments can be a big thing here. Um, you know, definitely in the education sector as well, we're seeing a bigger and bigger switch to sort of these Wi-Fi enabled learning center or learning areas uh, definitely help a lot. Uh, when it comes to the GWN 76000 LR, our long range access point, of course, you want to look here for those outdoor environments. Uh, or even we've seen some large indoor covered spaces. So, you know, let's, we're sort of talking about maybe sort of more warehouse areas, uh, shipping docks. We definitely uh, would be a great solution for this is just sort of cover it with just a Wi-Fi enabled environment. It's really allowed for that, just mobile productivity. People don't have to slow down or stop or, um, you know, maybe go back to a centralized location to access the internet. They can just do it right there on the spot. Uh, when it comes to our GWN 7000, uh, it can really support all of those uh, APs through routing power and, of course, any multi-network VPN um, sort of environment uh, would definitely find a lot of use with this. Uh, and of course, when it comes to the GWN uh, cloud, we have that remote network management. Um, this is also able to configure and set up and manage tons of APs. There's literally not a limit to the amount that you can manage on this device. So when you have some more of those, or excuse me, on this uh, cloud platform. So when you have just sort of these just massive uh, deployments, so for example, uh, airport, excuse me, airports, uh, multi-office deployments, um, an entire, you can really just manage an, literally an entire enterprise's um, Wi-Fi networks, all just through the cloud. So yeah, so the GWN 7610 and 76000 deployment. Uh, so really what we're looking for here is hospitals, offices, schools, hotels, and uh, really other high user density deployments is uh, what you want to look out for. Um, it can handle up to 250 uh, on the 7610 or 450 concurrent Wi-Fi clients. Uh, the 7610 uh, is more of a less users but higher throughput. Um, so really this would be a great solution when it comes to maybe a less user density deployment, um, but where just that sort of data transfer is a really big deal. So for example, office deployments, this is huge. You may not have so many people crammed into one spot, but with the range, with the uh, throughput as well, you can really maintain that just sort of uh, mobile productivity without having any slowdowns or any lag in the, uh, in the environment. Uh, the 76,000 is more of a many users but lower throughput. So really what we're talking about here is different sort of, uh, I think maybe lecture halls that can have as much as 100, 200 people, uh, students in them that need to have access. 
Um, of course, then we also have convention centers. Also, it's a, a solid option for them as well. Uh, hotels, hospitals, um, just any of those areas where you can have a lot of people packed into one area that need to have access uh, to pretty decent throughput. Uh, so let's talk about now the 76LR deployment. Uh, so what we're really looking for here is more of the warehouse, sports complexes, uh, parks, and of course outdoor commercial spaces. Um, you know, definitely we've seen it with just different cafes, outdoor restaurants. Um, can definitely go ahead and utilize this solution. Uh, of course, on more of the industry sector, if you have any type of indoor outdoor warehouses, like I spoke to earlier, uh, shipping type of area, definitely a great place here. Um, it has that IP66 certified weatherproof casing as well, so really you don't have to worry about any type of environmental factors, um, sort of just putting, uh, excuse me, uh, crashing just your Wi-Fi environment because this is safe, good to go. Uh, it has that 450 meter range and 450 concurrent Wi-Fi clients. You know, definitely this is something that we can see in, in parks, sporting complexes. You will have all those people uh, sort of even stacked or put into stands. Uh, if you want to go ahead and give them a Wi-Fi access, uh, this is definitely the option for that. Uh, when talking about the GWN 70,000 deployment, this is our router. Uh, your multi-site and multi-floor VPN enabled networks, big, big deal for that. Uh, just being able to create that virtual private network for businesses to be able to exchange data and work within can have a big benefit to them. Uh, has that, uh, you know, VPN, like I said, and then the Wi-Fi network support, uh, being able to support up to 300 APs. So if you're doing more of a mid-range deployment when it comes to the access points or maybe a, you know, multi-building uh, deployment, you may want to look into this. Uh, and of course, it just has that really super fast speeds of 1 million packets per second routing that can benefit just all that data transfer so a network can really rely on it. And of course, it has those firewall features for maximum security. If you have a VPN, security is definitely something that's a concern of yours. Uh, and this is some, definitely something that will help support that. All right, so our GWN cloud uh, deployment scenario. So like I said, this is something that's in beta, uh, but what we were finding when it came to our GDM series is people were actually asking for more. Um, they want to be able to manage more APs. They want to be able to manage multiple clients on one cloud platform. Um, they want to be able to create, manage, and easy, excuse me, and easily adjust uh, SSIDs and different configuration. Um, so, like I said, this is really you want to look into those enterprise Wi-Fi networks, multi-site or just extreme Wi-Fi deployments in larger areas. Uh, we're talking about maybe airports, large corporate structures, and of course, uh, as well, like I said, multiple clients. You can manage multiple SSIDs, clients, groupings, all via the cloud. Uh, it gives that centralized Wi-Fi management all in one area. And of course, the scalability, full network monitoring and reporting has a big deal. It's, it's a good thing to be able to manage, configure, and, and be able to have access to all those access points and networks. But really just having that complete network monitoring and reporting can really help you in case you need to troubleshoot anything or see uh, any type of issues for scalability. So, when it comes to actually optimizing your network, uh, let's talk a little bit more about building the network first. Uh, so, of course, you know, you go into a deployment, you're ready to push it through. Uh, what are some things that you need to look for? Maybe ask your customer or client. Um, how about the users and concurrent clients? Uh, definitely a really big deal. The amount of traffic that they will see. Um, and Office, of course, has a very very set amount of people. You don't have to worry too much about that compared to the traffic maybe coming through a park that could have different seasons or uh, different warehouses that could have ebbs and flows and the amount of traffic coming through there and data exchange, definitely important. Uh, range requirements are always a big deal as well, uh, especially when it comes to the GWN 76000 LR, that long range uh, can really make or break the difference to the productivity of the users in the environment. Uh, speed requirements, definitely something you want to look into. There is, mm, I'm sure everyone can agree with me, there is nothing more frustrating than a slow network. So, you know, definitely being able to decide between, um, you know, that gigabit throughput and sort of figuring out uh, what their requirements there uh, are definitely a big deal. Uh, 
And of course, the type of networks as well. Uh, is a one network deployment, multi network deployment? Do they need to have link locations? Is a virtual private network needed uh, in order to link those uh, locations completely? Um, definitely all things maybe you should look into and ask when considering deploying uh, a GWN network solution. All right, so the GDLN series really helps you build, like I said, those intuitive and powerful networks. Um, so the embedded controller for those lower AP deployments we've definitely seen uh, is hugely helpful. Um, you can basically go ahead and set up the APs all through one master AP uh, and then configure the rest of them. Uh, the embedded controller also has that monitoring uh, and reporting of availability in it so you can really check out the entire network, see how it's performing. Uh, so for lower AP installations like smaller offices, uh, maybe multi-floor offices are only two or three uh, large, not too many clients, not too many APs needed, uh, commercial sector as well. Uh, you know, definitely this sort of eases that configuration, installation, and management. Um, you can actually have a captive portal and separate network management uh, when it comes to these. So being able to set up different networks for maybe employees and users, uh, and of course a captive portal to help support that type of thing. So, uh, you know, airports, for example, if you want people to be able to sort of load in, being able to have a customized landing page through the captive portal that users would have to sign in on makes a big difference and is a borderline necessity for most uh, commercial businesses. Uh, QoS standards, uh, fully supported, of course, is a big deal. Uh, if you guys aren't too aware of QoS standards, I'll, I'll just kind of air on it really quickly. It's basically the, uh, the access points availability to sort of prioritize different network traffic. Um, if you guys actually want to read into it a little bit more, when I send the follow-up to this, um, to this video talk, I'm actually going to include one of our blogs on QoS standards. Uh, just so if you're not too sure what this is, you can sort of freshen up on that. It's really insightful, really help, uh, helpful. Uh, the full comprehensive security, uh, definitely a big plus when it comes to this, just being able to have, if there's a lot of data transfer going between uh, many different users, this traffic, people want to know their data is safe, uh, and you definitely have that when it comes to our access points. And then, of course, uh, just the GWN cloud uh, for that easy management of large AP deployments. Uh, if you guys are currently deploying access points uh, right now, or uh, maybe you're looking to do it, definitely just give it a try on the GWN cloud. Uh, it really makes deploying, configuring, monitoring, and pulling reports on all those APs simple. And plus, you don't have to be on site to access it. Um, it just sort of puts it into the cloud, makes this cloud platform that you can access those APs uh, as well for. So if any of your clients are experiencing issues uh, or maybe need to scale up or down, uh, you'd be able to just go ahead and easily do it from there. All right, uh, so a little bit more detail on each of these uh, sort of features. Like I said, the embedded controller uh, has that easy provisioning and management uh, of the network. Uh, up to 30 APs when it comes to 76,000 LR. 50, uh, or excuse me, when it comes to 76,000 or the 76,000 LR, up to 50 APs with the GWN 7610, and up to 300 APs if you're using the GWN 7000 within that network as well. Um, really what this allows, brass tacks wise, is just powerful monitoring and simple scalability of the network. It really allows for just the configuration to go a lot faster for deployments. Um, and of course, being able to access individual client control to be able to look in that network and seeing how clients and how the users are using the network, uh, definitely useful as well. Uh, so like I said, you know, you can manage uh, AP groups and multiple SSIDs through it. Um, you can even completely customize the network from the channel width to the radio power frequency and of course band steering. Uh, these are all different ways in which you could really adjust how the network is being utilized, the range of the APs, the throughput of the APs, uh, of course, all very important. All right, uh, so talking about the captive portal. Um, so this is the, I'm sorry about that image, I was supposed to be on the uh, last slide, uh, but this is the web portal for signing in uh, and uh, for the Wi-Fi use. So um, from your airports, hotels, commercial shops, business centers, and more, uh, completely customizable landing page. Um, like I said, that image on the right isn't, <laughs> that was supposed to be on the last one. Uh, but yeah, so it's a completely customizable landing page that you could set up. 
uh, with policy configuration as well. So you can be, basically go ahead and set up the expiration time um, of the actual Wi-Fi connection, the authentication type, and of course a portal page customization. You can literally upload landing pages and have those uh, be the one that's used for the captive portal. Uh, then it also has uh, Facebook, into, excuse me, Facebook integration as well, uh, so people can go ahead and utilize Facebook tokens in order to uh, log into the Wi-Fi networks. Definitely something that's really useful when it comes to those sort of commercial shops, um, for example, coffee, de uh, excuse me, cafe deployments, uh, restaurants, etc. Uh, those QoS standards, I'm just going to air over this again. Like I said, it prioritizes the data exchange. Um, so it prioritizes from the voice. So, for example, VoIP experience, video, um, best effort uh, type of things, which is more about web browsing, emails, et cetera. And, of course, uh, background type of access, which has to do more with, like, FTP access, things like that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to send out a blog on this one as well, uh, which really is super insightful. We'll have a great amount of information in it uh, after this meeting, uh, along with the presentation uh, and recording in the follow-up email. Uh, so that comprehensive security as well, uh, an anti-hacking secure boot uh, will just definitely help the APs themselves make sure that they are not compromised. Uh, critical data and control lockdown via digital signatures as well will just keep that data exchange very secured and be able to lock, out, lock down an AP if anything or a user if anything seems fishy uh, or if an attempt on the APs are being made. Uh, unique security certificates as well per AP. Uh, and of course, a random default password per device as well can have a big, big impact when it comes to just making sure you don't want anyone outside accessing uh, the administration rights of the access point itself. Uh, and last but not least, the GWN Cloud, uh, Wi-Fi networking management platform. Uh, it really allows you to have that configuration management. Uh, Wi-Fi AP and client, uh, excuse me, and client monitoring all available there. Uh, it has the statistics and reports uh, you can easily pull from it as well. And of course, events and alerts you would be able to set up. So if APs go down or if uh, a network itself is experiencing any type of hiccups, uh, you'd be able to be alerted of that. Uh, like I said, it has that multi-site management capabilities. There are no limit on the amount of APs that you could have. And of course, access from anywhere uh, definitely gives you that availability to not have to go on site every single time an AP goes down. Uh, you'd be able to troubleshoot uh, right there from your office um, or your computer, laptop, wherever you are. Like I said, this is currently in beta. Definitely suggest checking it out. Just go to gwn.cloud uh, if you're deploying those APs. It's going to be really helpful. Uh, so yeah, so just the GWN Cloud, if you just uh, give you a little bit more of a zoomed out look of it, uh, like I said, it gives you that multi-site report, uh, excuse me, multi-site uh, management where you can sort of manage everything through the cloud. So that would be you on your computer there uh, taking a look at your network, whether this be multiple clients or maybe this is one complete enterprise, you'd be able to configure, manage, scale, uh, and monitor all from uh, the cloud itself. All right. So that is it for our presentation. Now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a quick, quick overview look of the actual cloud here. Uh, so this is our cloud platform uh, that we have access to. Uh, as you can see, we have a dashboard at the top. Moving down, we have different um, overviews. You can take a look at the access point clients, SSIDs. Um, so just to kind of go over this before our Q&A session. Uh, this is what you'd see. Like I said, it's currently in beta, so there may be some changes, definitely some more additions coming in. Um, you can see everything from the overview of your device. We have the APs and clients would generate here uh, to any type of alerts that you would be able to set up, uh, as well as monitoring, of course, your bandwidth usage from the uploads and downloads within your networks, uh, as long as the client counts. Uh, and our top clients and APs that are being used, and of course, the top SSIDs overall. Uh, we'd be able to go ahead and monitor, check out our network lists that we have here uh, to being able to create new networks and configure and edit them uh, to our AP lists as well. All right. So this is the AP page uh, here where you'd basically be able to go ahead and look at a summary of all of the access points that you have 
uh, and their sort of distribution. If they're online, offline, as you can see for an example here, I have one currently that I've set to be offline. Uh, to the current status of it. So here's our uh, sort of example AP that we have available here. And of course, the configuration can be accessed as well. Everything from the name to our band steer, like I said, its mode. Uh, this is more so actually changing the configurations of the AP itself, all available there. Uh, clients as well, this will generate here, uh, not too much to sort of show here currently at the time, but uh, you'd be able to go ahead and pull summaries of all the SSIDs or specific uh, SSIDs and sort of seeing their interaction with different user, the user's interaction with those SSIDs in your network. Uh, of course, you can go ahead and check out the status of it as well. Uh, if you have any time band clients, uh, this sort of feature is going to be coming up here pretty soon. Uh, that'd be available here as well. Our policy lists. Uh, so if you want to just sort of access policy, how users are allowed to sort of utilize the APs, uh, you'd be able to see those here, as well as any access lists. Uh, for example, a global blacklist, if you want to uh, blacklist different IPs or Macs. Uh, then just entering through here, we have our SSIDs, the configuration is here. Uh, you'd be able to go ahead and monitor their bandwidth usage and their client count here uh, to the configuration of those SSIDs. Those are all available here as well um, and can be adjusted. So here's our little sample one that we have here. Uh, we have it enabled. If you want VLAN, it definitely uh, can be done here to our access security uh, and any sort of advanced settings. This is where we'd be able to go ahead and add those different devices to it. So like I said, when I was talking about the scalability, it's really simple to just go ahead and add those access points and flip them over from the available devices to the member devices for the SSID. And of course, any type of wireless scheduling that you want to have available, you'd be able to go ahead and access and edit that here. So I was talking about the captive portal. Uh, we'd be able to have a look at a summary of all of our captive portals here. Uh, we can go ahead and have that sort of uh, policy list as well uh, here when it comes to the uh, configuration of it, uh, as well as then going ahead and adjusting and uploading those sort of customized HTML pages and information. Those can all be done here. Any type of bandwidth rules that you want to go ahead and add uh, can be done here on certain SSIDs. Range constraints can be done here, uh, as long as with any upstream or downstream limitations. And last but not least, this is just sort of more of the information on the alerts that you can set up for email notifications. Uh, you can go ahead and configure those alerts. So from memory usage, CPU, all the way down to if an AP goes offline, give them a little bit more uh, details on the alerts as well. And of course, uh, your just basic maintenance and settings are all available there. All right, guys. So yeah, that's just that concludes a little overview of the uh, of the cloud, the presentation. Uh, like I said, I'll go ahead and be sharing those uh, after this meeting. I'm just gonna go ahead. Bring. All right. Okay. All right, everyone should be able to see me now. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and ask away. Uh, go ahead and utilize that Q&A feature. I'll just start working my way through them uh, real quick. Uh, if not, though, if you don't have any questions, that's sort of everything you were looking for, feel free to go ahead. You're free to go. Uh, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, so when it comes to technical questions, I'll, I'll try and answer them as, uh, as best as I can, but uh, I'll definitely look into them afterwards if I can and help you out with those. All right. Uh, so Ricardo asks, hi, how can I add the AP to the cloud? That actually be done in the AP section of the cloud. Um, it's actually pretty fantastic, really easy to do. Uh, you could either just go ahead and add it using the MAC address as well. Uh, excuse me, using the MAC address, or if you actually have the, uh, the cloud application on your uh, iOS or Android device, 
It's really as simple as taking it, holding it up, and it will automatically scan, take a picture of it, and add it automatically. So you won't even have to actually go in, uh, add the MAC address and everything like that. It'll just automatically upload it for you if you're using that app. All right. Um, is there any cost for the cloud? Uh, no, not currently. It's just, like I said, completely uh, online, beta-wise. Uh, just go ahead, check it out. You feel free to just give it a try. Uh, we'll be releasing a little bit more information on that as it comes more available. Uh, but for now, yeah, feel free to just give it a try completely free. Um, try out the beta. How do you convert from a controller configuration to a cloud configuration? You know, I'm actually not too sure on that one, Geoff. I'll have to look into it for you. Um, I'll get back to you on that one, though. Um, I, would, I would assume if you're adding, because the APs, if you're adding them to the cloud, they should just carry that configuration. There's no reason they should um, sort of just unconfigure themselves. Um, but I'll, I'll look into that a little bit more, because if you already have a network set up, you may have to do something special. Uh, I'll actually see if we have any sort of uh, support on that. Uh, is QoS on all these devices? Yes, it is. Uh, those are available there. Uh, on those, like I said, I'll, I'll go ahead and add the uh, one of our blog posts on QoS to the follow-up email that I'm going to send after this presentation. Uh, it'll give a lot of really useful, uh, insightful information on QoS standards. All right. So I'm just going to pop over to the chat real quick, see if you guys maybe put some questions here. So uh, if you guys have more questions, please feel free. Go ahead and use the Q&A um, option uh, as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll be providing the um, I'll be providing the presentation, both the actual presentation you saw today and the recording in the follow-up email, like I said. Um, do I have to open the port on my router? Uh, you shouldn't have to, um, but let me check with one of our engineers on that one. Um, will the GWN 7000 mask my client's home external address for private internet browsing uh, and streaming? I don't believe it will. It really can only be making for making the um, that sort of like VPN connection, site to site type of thing uh, for creating a virtual private network. Um, and I believe that is everything. How do you reduce the signal range? You can actually do that in actually configuring uh, the APs themselves um, through the bandwidth. Is it secure to use the cloud portal? Yeah, the cloud portal is completely secured. Uh, it's hosted uh, just through Amazon Web Service. Um, you know, it's definitely, you, you won't have to worry about any of your data being sort of taken or maliciously attacked or anything uh, there on that standard. Um, it's definitely completely um, hitting that market leading security that you would expect when it comes to the secure, uh, to security. Um, is it easy to switch from cloud to the local again? Yeah, it's, it's really like not, not too much of an issue. You should be able to just go ahead and go from the uh, local controller. Uh, like I said, just adding the APs, you can configure them there uh, as well. So via the cloud. All right, well, I think that's pretty much all of the questions. Uh, so, oh, sorry, a couple more just, just popped in. I'll try to add them to the cloud. Uh, when you, oh, yeah, um, is a good question. So, yeah, when you're adding the, um, the 76,000 uh, and the 76,000 LR to the cloud, uh, so it does ask you for the MAC address like you have and the password. Uh, the password that goes along with that MAC is the actual um, unique password per each individual device that's on the back of it. It should be right below the device where it says password uh, as well. It's just the default one to it. Uh, can a cloud deploy be done on a local network? Unfortunately, uh, it, it can't since the uh, the cloud is actually done through, uh, like I said, through that uh, internet connection. So it would need a 
sort of connection to the actual internet. I'm assuming you're talking about like a like a LAN Wi-Fi network. Uh, the cloud wouldn't be able to be used there. You would probably want to more so look to uh, the GWN 7000 for that one, uh, just depending on the amount of APs you have, or just use one of the built-in controllers for one of the APs. All right, guys. So I think that's just about everything. Uh, I hope that was pretty informative. You guys learned uh, all you can there about our networking line, uh, just the different capabilities that it has when it comes to deploying it that can help you optimize and sort of build great networks. Uh, like I said, I'll be sending out this presentation and recording afterwards uh, to everyone who attended here in IP Video Talk. Uh, for everyone who's watching live on Facebook, thank you so much for giving a little bit of your time to check out a little bit more about uh, our GWN networking uh, solutions. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to jump on our website, use our chat, or go ahead and email me back when I send this out. I'll be able to follow up more with you there. Uh, but thank you so much for attending. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend as well. Thank you. Take care.